Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Hearthstone Deck Spotlight. My name is Tommy Wave, and today we'll be taking a look at Happy Boy's uh, Secret Paladin. Secret Paladin, of course, the Scourge of Old Standard, uh, a very, very powerful deck that uh, I guess has since, you know, never really gotten a lot of support outside of a few select cards, but... Uh, Happy Boys has got some uh, really interesting stuff going on here, um, and they've actually managed to hit Legend with the deck. So, you know, if, as soon as anyone hits Legend with a deck like this, uh, I think it definitely gives some validity to the strategy. However, it's certainly not something we've really played a lot of before. Uh, I think we tried early in the, maybe early in the Witchwood meta or something, just after Bellringer Sentry had come out, uh, we tried a Secret Paladin deck, but since then it's basically been Radio Silence. Uh, so I'm really keen to see what this uh, interesting new archetype kind of kind of brings to standard, especially with uh, the recent nerfs and the recent uh, some decks leaving the format, some decks uh, still remaining. I think it's a good, good time to be uh, trying stuff like this. So uh, we'll go through the general uh, cards in here. Before I do, though, I do want to let everyone know, of course, uh, Happy Boys is a, a fantastic player. We've covered plenty of their decks in the past. Um, I want to let you know that uh, you can catch them at Twitter, as you can see there, up there, you can get them at boys underscore happy on Twitter, uh, or you can catch them on Twitch at uh, happy underscore boys. They're streaming a lot. They've actually been streaming a lot with this deck as well, it seems. So uh, maybe after this video, if you like the, t you have a little bit of a taste of the deck, you like it, go check out the stream, go check out some VODs and see how to really play it. Cause I'm sure we are going to butcher, we're going to butcher this deck. Uh, so we've got a nice selection of one drops here. We've got a Singleton Argent Squire, two Righteous Protectors, two Secret Keepers. I like that kind of uh, the five, five one drops. And I think this is, you know, means that there's been a conscious choice that, you know, maybe they only had four one drops in there and decided one more was the perfect amount. Maybe they had six and decided cutting one was uh, the correct choice. So I like that it seems like some thought has gone into this uh, one drop selection. Uh, this is also where we find all of our secrets. So we've got one auto defense matrix. This may be a newer secret secrets that some of you all haven't seen from Boomsday Project. Uh, when one of your minions is attacked, give it Divine Shield. Uh, we certainly have uh, seen this card do some uh, tremendous work when we've discovered it off Hydrologist and things like that. I think it's fantastic. We've got two Noble Sacrifice. Get Down is uh, you know, just one of the best secrets out there. Usually lets you trade upwards for mana. Uh, and we've got Redemption in here. So hopefully if we've got some uh, maybe bigger minions or some uh, more valuable minions, things like Knife Juggler, Vicious Fledgling, that kind of stuff, um, we can Redemption them uh, and keep our, uh, our board nice and healthy. Onto the twos, we've got Hydrologist and Knife Juggler. Hydrologist is going to give us a little bit of extra value. Um, combos quite well with Secret Keeper. Uh, and Knife Juggler, just uh, fantastic with our hero power, fantastic with a bunch of one drops in the deck. Really like Knife Juggler. Hopefully uh, we can get some good juggles off. Uh, onto the threes, two Divine Favor. We've you've heard me talk about Divine Favor before. Not really a big fan of the double Divine Favor, um, but this may be a different deck to one that ones that we're used to playing. Maybe double Divine Favor is uh, is necessary in this kind of deck. Uh, singleton Unidentified Mall. Um, curious as to why it's just the Singleton, not the double. Uh, unidentified Mall is one of the more powerful cards in Paladin, uh, so I'd love to know why there's just uh just one in here double vicious fledgling finally oh the return of flappy bird we've been seeing this quite a lot lately um you know we saw all those odd rogues and and other aggressive decks i think when we played the the aggro druid last week as well there was playing hench clan thug over vicious fledgling and you know i've just been really wanting to hit some people in the face with the flappy bird been wanting to get that wind fury test my wind fury luck again um so I'm glad to see this in here. And like I said, very good with redemption, things like that. Noble sacrifice. We have lots of ways to protect it. Uh, so hopefully we can get some big bird hits off. Singleton Bell Ring Sentry. I think this is really interesting. Um, most people, if you said do Secret Paladin, I think they'd immediately jam two uh, Bell Ring Sentries into the deck. But we only really have five uh, five secrets in the deck. And if the Bell Ring Sentry rips out two, a second Bell, Bell Ring Sentry might rip out two. But chances are we've drawn some amount of secrets since then. Um, so I think just the one bell ring a sentry, uh, seems fine. Double blessing of Kings trying to get aggressive here. Um, this is kind of the card that I'm most kind of suspect of. I'm um, just not sure if we have the kind of critical mass of creatures to, to land it, but I guess we do have a, uh, a lot of ways to protect said creatures and, and do really want to, do really want to bless my flappy bird. Oof, that sounds, 
Sounds delightful. Uh, Singleton Spellbreaker. I can always get behind Spellbreaker. Don't leave home without it. Uh, Call to Arms in here. Call to Arms, a couple of good targets, a couple of weak targets. Obviously, Hydrologist is not the best rip, uh, but Knife Juggler is fantastic, particularly if it comes out first, because you will get those juggles off. Um, and even though we're not getting the full value off of uh, getting these one drops out, uh, these are you know, premium one drops, you know, I definitely think Righteous Protector uh, and Secret Keeper, fantastic to pull out off of a uh, call to arms. So I'm happy to see that. Fungal Mancer as well. Uh, another thing, kind of like the Blessing of Kings, do we have the critical mass of, of creatures? I guess it does come higher up the curve, so uh, preferably after we call to arms, we might have a bit of a board. Um, but once again, we can always kind of say, like, is fungal is this a Fungal Mancer deck or is this a Cobalt Scalebane deck? Uh, and the last couple of cards here are really strong. Uh, Mojo Master Z here is going to keep that game in the mid game, in that early mid game. That's where our decks uh, got the most strength. It's going to hopefully delay our opponent from hitting, you know, Gul'dan, hitting, uh, you know, maybe playing Void Lords, playing these big defensive threats that allow them to stabilize. That's what Z here is uh, designed to stop, even if it just gives us an extra turn or two uh, in our, where, where our game plan is more powerful. I think that's uh, uh, good enough to warrant the inclusion. Sunkeeper Tarim, of course, uh, all these uh, smaller boys gonna get turned into bigger boys, uh, also making your opponent's creatures a lot smaller. Um, yeah, you've seen this in Odd Pal and you've seen this many times before since Angora has been released. Sunkeeper Tarim has been one of the most powerful, uh, most powerful legendaries from that set. In fact, I think it had one of the highest uh, win rate percentages, a uh, played win rate percentages from a recent HS Replays uh, tweet. You should always follow them, by the way. Well, after you're done following boy, boys underscore happy on Twitter, give HS replays a, uh, a follow because they have some good stuff coming out. And just the one of Vine Cleaver here, give the deck a bit of extra reach, a bit of extra recovery. Um, I'd be surprised if maybe two wasn't, uh, wasn't warranted, but we'll jump into some games. We'll see how we go. We'll take a look at the cards and we'll uh, play this horribly, but we're going to learn a lot. So let's learn together. Let's get it. Honor. Okay. We are here with the, uh, with the Secret Paladin. Now, Happy Boys has been kind enough to include a mulligan guide, so we're definitely going to go for that. But we're up against Druid. You'd be a bit more greedy in Fish for Vicious Fledgling and Tarim. Without coin... Secret Keeper, Double Secret, Vicious Fledgling, Righteous Protector, Into Redemption, plus Blessing of Might. Do we have Blessing of Might in the deck? There's no Blessing of Might in this deck. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Maybe they're talking about card replacements. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll send all of this back and hope that we can hit some one drops. Hit that Secret Keeper. Well, Argent Squire is good, and Bell Ring a Sentry gives us a little bit of grind, which we might need. The light protects me. Is this the first druid that we've uh, encountered post nerf? I think it might be. I'm playing Odd Face Hunter right now. Awesome! Send me the list. I think Odd Face Hunter is for sure one of my favorite, uh, actually one of my favorite decks since um since the release of Baku and Gen. I think Odd Hunter does not get the respect that it deserves. I think it's seen as too much, as very much a, uh, seems very much like a noob, noob smasher deck or whatever, or deck for noobs. Um, when in actuality, I think it's, you know, it's like we talk about all the time with, if you're playing a control deck, you have to make, you have a lot of decisions to make. So each decision is kind of less important than uh, than the last. Now, are we going to go for Bell Ringer Sentry here, or are we just going to Blessing of Kings up? This is tough. Let me think. I think we go for Blessing of Kings, expecting a swipe next turn. I fight. Uh, but yeah, whereas if you're playing a deck like Odd, Odd Hunter, the games are only uh, so short that 
you have to make sure that every single decision you make is the correct one. Close the gates. I fight. The battle. Definitely should have uh, checked to make sure there was only one auto defense matrix in the deck. Just in case we, uh, if there was two, we didn't want to pull an auto defense matrix off the bell ringer sentry. Get a redemption. Yeah. Ooh. That's pretty nasty. Alright, you definitely are. Uh, it's well equipped to deal with. What we're doing, but maybe this is why the uh, double divine favor. Put this apple on your head. Hopefully, they're out of single target removal. I think even Bomb Hunter is my favorite deck right now, next to Odd Rogue. Huh? Glad you're getting into Odd Rogue. Did you do you use HS Replay to deck track? I use the HS Replay deck tracker when I'm not streaming. Uh, when I am streaming, I use Inkeeper. So these call to arms. Unfortunately, we've got two hydrologists, two righteous protectors, two secret keepers left in our deck. So we might get some pretty bad rips. Maybe we should just go for this vine cleaver. Hmm. For justice! Reporting for duty. Reporting for duty. Hmm. Hey, catch! Bad roll? Yeah, maybe. I mean... Part of me is concerned maybe we should have been going for Call to Arms because we only have so many two drops in the deck. We have a redemption up. We do. Where does this jump in Face. Ooh. Did not know that that's how that triggered. The web unravels. Interesting. So we might go for a call to arms this turn just to get a secret keeper or two in play because our last uh, secret's going to be on the field. Hmm. 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 Well, we just go for Fungal Mancer. Mushroom power! For justice! I don't really want to run into any, a spreading plague, but. I mean, if this is Taunt Druid, are they going to be running Spreading Plague? Probably not. For justice. I guess what we could have done is, uh, like, attacked with one Silver Hand Recruit and Hero Powered. And if we got the 50 50 on that, then we can trade another Silver Hand Recruit in. The, uh, it's one of the secret keepers. Hmm. The battle. 
The battle for justice. Reporting for duty. Reporting for duty. I guess we'll diversify our threats in case um in case our opponent has a naturalize. We don't want to put all our eggs in one, one knife juggle. The battles. The battle. Nourish on draw. They've already played both racks and a and a spell stone, so even a naturalize or something probably wouldn't have saved them there. They'd need something like a spell stone and a naturalize. Something like that. So Oof, GG's. Well played to our opponent. Um Yeah, wow. The way we're definitely learning a lot here. Hopefully, uh hopefully y'all are getting something out of it. Alright, here with another game with the Secret Paladin from Happy Boys. Uh, got an interesting one here, well, got a 1 and a 2, so I guess we'll keep the uh, the curve. Send back the Call to Arms. See if we can't find a secret or something to pump up the Secret Keeper. No. Another Druid though. Interesting, we got a 1, 2, 3. So hopefully our opponent freaks out and uses their removal on these two, because they're pretty high value targets. I think it can definitely warrant freaking out over this kind of board. Coin three. What do you got on three? Coin ferocious hell. I can't say. Does that mean they have another three? Why would you coin a ferocious hell? I guess you could be trying to get some traction. <laughs> Stealth or Divine Shield? And stealth protects us from mm. stealth protects us from naturalize and uh, something like that. It's probably divine shield though. Like I can't imagine that. <laughs> spellstone. Yeah, I can't imagine they wouldn't have played the spellstone though. Like surely they would have. I think we could have taken stealth if we weren't going to play the other. We need taunt. But I don't want to give them taunt. And we only got one hydrologist, which I guess is pretty good. Now's where we want that stealth. I would go on the end. And they just picked up a spell stone. How do we push this uh this fledgling through our opponent's throat? Let me think. Hmm. Do we want to put all our eggs in one fledgling? I think we do. Mushroom power! <laughs> and there's a couple of different ways we could have... Uh, There's a couple of different ways we could have ordered that fungal mancer. We could have done it so that our fledgling gets through, but it doesn't have the buff. 
but we'd be able to keep a couple of our other pieces. Like the most conservative play I think would have been to go for the Fungal Mancer on the... I did have a naturalized too. Uh, three plus four is seven. Yeah, we could have could have done the fungal mancer on the righteous protector and the secret keeper, and traded the divine shield in the secret keeper for. Hmm, it's pretty bad for us. For justice! Reporting for duty. I fight. <laughs> Be right back, I just brought some food, no worries. Oh my gosh. Where did that come from? I'm glad we didn't uh, play the secret keeper last turn. Alright. I think we should be able to lethal our opponent here. Uh, secret, we can Spellbreaker this. This will take one Vine Cleaver shot. This will kill this. Then we have two, three, four, five. So let's do that. Your magic shall not save you. The battle! <laughs> for justice! Reporting for duty. I fight. The battle! Ooh, just. Okay. So yeah, obviously we uh we took a very aggressive line in buffing the uh the, the flappy bird with the fungal mancer. Um and we got it got a little bit punished, I think. I guess it was pretty reasonable for us to suspect that our opponent might have had a naturalize in their hand and be kind of sandbagging it, uh, like being very conservative with it. Uh, so I think in, in, in hindsight, I would have gone for the uh, more, uh, the less aggressive line, kind of the more conservative line of just buff the, the Righteous Protector and the Secret Keeper, trade those in, you know, use our, we wouldn't get as much damage in that turn, we'd miss four damage. Um, but I think it would have set us up a little bit better for the future. Anyway, GG. With honor. Okay. Up against Shaman. Uh, I think we'll just send back the Spellbreaker. Got the Righteous Protector. Got a, our choice of twos. Seems like the last couple of games, the, uh, the turn two knife jungler hasn't really been playing very well for us. Yeah, we may want to bait out some kind of, like, if our opponent's on even shaman, bait out an eel with the hydrologist. We have turned our curse into yeah. our strength. Yeah, Happy Boys does mention in their, uh, their matchup guide that uh, we want to focus on finding one drops, finding out our early drops and controlling the board. Does not any removal run any removal except for Hagatha? Well, that's a lie. They'll definitely be running the uh, the eel. The eel counts as removal. What to do? Any NA players in chat? We do get a fair few NA players. Hex spellbreaker. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what kind of list they were looking at, but... Repent. 
Maybe we should have gone for the uh, the redemption there, as the noble sacrifice is the most obvious one. There's the you. Our opponent will likely not attack, I'm guessing. Yep. Put the chapel on your head. I'll never tell. Repent. Now let's see where this juggle goes. Into the juggle. We might just have to kind of YOLO Blessing of Kings something and hope that it, uh... Hope that they don't have the Spellbreaker or the Hex. Or... It's a weird placement. Mm, I guess not. Oh, yep, I guess we're doing this. this I wonder would be kind of curious for them I think to uh use removal on this secret keeper Sick. Get the the double juggle. Fortunately, the second called Worms only gets us uh, an Argent Squire and a Righteous Protector. Hmm. Call to Arms is good to bring us back. Uh, not right now, because it doesn't get... Uh, it only gets us two, two one-drops. Oh, especially after the Spellbreaker came out. Brutal. I would have thought they'd play a, played a Corpse Taker significantly earlier. That was from the other turn. Yeah, the first uh, Call to Arms was, was good. Like, that juggler got a good juggle off, but our opponent has con control of the board and has so many tools that allow them to kind of continue to control the board. Very, uh, very proactive board control. So we're in a bit of a bit of a pickle here. And they also play, you know, if they were to just drop a Lich King right now, I don't think that any there would be anything we could do about it. Pally Boys, yeah. We are playing Happy Boys Pally Boy. By the element. Element. Just the body. How interesting. Power! 
charging for duty. Fight. The battle. Hmm. I don't think I want to throw down the redemption. Maybe I do. No, I think I want to save it for this vicious fledgling or something like that. We still have four secrets left in it. Would love to pick up like a Zhe or a Bell Ring a Century. The battle. I And maybe they just don't have anything, but I assume that they probably have like a a Hagatha or something. Oh, don't tell me they got the Hagatha off the top. That would be a uh whew. Our, our game plan right now is just hope that they don't have the Hagatha. Hope that they uh do nothing. They attack their Kalamos into one of our vicious fledglings that comes back off the redemption. No! Kill one of the fledglings first, please. Face. Oh, but I don't have space for the noble sack to go off. Big wolf. Redemption on a frog. Frog redemption. Oh, were they planning on like trading and getting the uh, flame tongue line? Wow, double picks. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. The battle. I fight. The battle. The battle. The battle. Ungoro belongs to the fight. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. We got a game. Sunkeeper Taram for the save. Now our opponent has to have the Hagatha. Ah! Big shout out to Happy Boys for the, uh, for the deck. Tremendous. Oh. Anyway, that's why, uh, that is certainly why Taram has one of the highest win percentage rates, played win percentage rates of, uh, of Ungoro. Why did they concede? Probably just didn't have any answers. I mean, you saw they were popping off hexes to to tango with our uh, vicious fledglings, so I can't imagine what else was in their hand though. They still had a couple of cards there. Maybe it's stuff like uh... oh, it couldn't have been like healing rain or anything like that because they're even. Um, I don't know. Not sure what could have been in hand. Pro probably cards like earthen might kind of make sense. Um, maybe corpse takers without any buffs but i can't think of many anyway this is happy boys uh secret paladin deck had a lot of fun with this one honestly um i can appreciate that like we said before the numbers seem fairly well worked out um i don't think any of the cards in the deck especially even ones that we thought were um a bit suspect like those uh you know, blessing of kings and things like that. Every card made sense and every card um, worked out. Even the kind of the little non-bow thing of like, oh, there's call to arms in the deck, but you know, we've got hydrologists here. Um, those didn't really matter. The vine cleaver definitely saved us. The tarum definitely saved us. We never played Zihi, but I suspect that there would have been a couple of situations where Zihi would have definitely pulled through for us. Uh, this is definitely a fungal mancer deck, I think we can say, instead of a cobalt scale band deck. Um, and everything else kind of made sense. So, look, if you are a, uh, if you are 
a paladin diehard, particularly a secret paladin diehard, this is definitely the deck for you. Relatively budget, only two legendaries, one that if you are a secret paladin diehard, you probably already have. The other one being a newer one that's potentially kind of replaceable. Um, and yeah, other than that, like I said, big shout out to Happy Boys. Give them a follow on Twitter at, at boys underscore happy or on Twitch at happy underscore boys. I think they're on Instagram as well. Link will be down in the description with all the other links as well, including a link over to the Hearth Pwn deck article. Jump over there. Give this hot number a plus one. Leave a lovely, thoughtful comment like I know you will. Uh, my details are down there as well, including my Twitter, my Twitch. Jump over. Come join us. Come have some fun. Uh, if you've got any decks you want me to play, those are the places to send them to me. But until next time, stay safe, stay wavy, stay happy, eat the rich. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that video. Check out other ones over here, or come subscribe to the Wave Pool for more excellent times.